Thank you for tuning in to Teaching for the Culture. This is your host, Bianca Goolsby, and I have Rufus. Rufus is such a brave student that went and spoke at the school board meeting at their last meeting, talking about the abuse that was taking place at their school. And so I want to turn it over to Rufus. So how are you doing, Rufus? Uh, well, today um, has been a, a pretty good day. Um, I have I had work in the morning. And then I've been just doing general organizing stuff for the protest now that it's tomorrow. Talk to me about the protest. What's going on with that? So the protest tomorrow, um, it's it starts at 2.30 outside of the building where the school board meets. And the purpose for it starting then was so I could get to meet everybody because um, a lot of my interactions with people um, throughout this process has been phone calls and texts and things like that. So the very few people I've gotten to meet in person lately. So I started it at 2.30 so everybody could meet and get to know each other because the I feel like the most powerful act that your people are, are going to be able to see because it's recorded is what everybody shares at the school board meeting because the pro part of the protest is inviting people to come to the school board meeting and publicly share their experiences. Um, those who feel comfortable with it. Of course, nobody is being like, nobody has to, it's all by choice. Um, so yeah, that's, I guess the purpose of that's one of the purposes of the protest is for people who haven't had any sort of chance to tell their stories to any outlet um, get that chance. So I'm glad that there will be more people speaking out about this. And even in your public comment, you had um, indicated that after you spoke out that many people reached out to you after the fact to say, yeah, I've had a triggering and traumatic experience at the school as well. Um, are there some, is there some information that you could share with us? The day the story released um in the newspaper, which is what started all of this, was Bethany Barnes reporting in the Tampa Bay Times. Um, the day that that got released, I think, was either the day I just returned from the hospital from breaking my leg or the like right after, um, like the day right after I came home. Um, so one of like the first things on my mind that whole day was just, I it wasn't even on my radar that that story might drop, you know. I was just kind of, I was on, I was just at home, you know, my birthday was coming up, my leg was broken, there wasn't much for me to do. And then it was like, I, it was like, kind of everything in my life kind of shifted focus. Um, Like that, that the day, once I found out that the story had written release, because one thing I didn't know when it came out, like, I know the newspaper had my picture. I didn't realize I was going to be the cover story. Like my face was going to be the cover of it. Um, so it was like instantly, like overnight, I had become like the face for like this whole movement um, in the newspaper. And so messages like started pouring in really, like over the span of two or three days, I had about like 50 messages from different people. Some of them I knew, some of them I didn't. Some of them I knew by name only. <laughs> um, and the general gist of all the message is were, you know, thank you. Something like this happened to me. And it was, it's been really hard, but it's nice to see that something's changing. Um, so that was the general message of everyone I talked to. Um, yeah, the days following the initial um, newspaper report. And then following... So when I went to the school board meeting that day, um, I I had all, like it was the school board meeting took place days after the newspaper article released. So within that two or three days, like I had those messages. And so I went to the school board meeting that day because um, I knew like of these like 51 people, like 50 plus myself only one of us that day was going to have like that chance to speak. 
because th nobody knows about these school board meetings. They're not like advertised very well. So in my speech, I said, you know, I'm speaking for these 50 plus people who have reached out to me and, and are never going to get a chance to speak. And it was after that, like listening back to what I said, I, I, I thought, well, why aren't they going to get a chance? Who says they don't get a chance? So that's what this protest is, is me giving people that, or me trying my best to give people their chance to sh share their stories. Um, yeah. I just want to say that I am very proud of you um, for using your voice and standing up um, for, for what is right. Um, just a quick question. Have you received any type of backlash or any type of negative reaction due to you speaking out about the stuff that was happening um, on your campus? Um, well, thankfully, I'm not a Hillsborough County Public School student. Um, I long since been in like college and stuff. I'm graduated. So there's not much of in terms of like retaliation the school board can do to me. Hence why I felt so comfortable speaking. Um, so in terms of like that, no, not really. Um, and I haven't received really much. I, I don't think I've received really any backlash, um, which I'm thankful for. Um, yeah. Certainly not public, um, not in like um, any online capacity. Um, the, and I'll, while I'm very thankful I haven't received any backlash, I you know, any official backlash from the school board. I also haven't received any official support or anything. Like I said, it's just radio silence. Um, and it's, it's frustrating. Um, because after a certain point of radio silence, it's hard to, to say, well, nobody's listening. You know, why am I even still trying? Um, yeah. Yeah. What would you like the district to do and or how would you like them to address the issue that you brought forward to them and similar issues that people are experiencing? Yeah, so this is where I feel like the school board is trying to frame like the issues I'm bringing up as issues with specific students, like specific either students who have graduated or are going to school now that like I'm trying to like target or trying to get some action against when and really I'm not advocating for any action against students. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm advocating for action against the people who are supposed to take care of us, the school board, the administration, any like adults. Um, I'm advocating for action against them. So I feel like the school board is trying to reframe my whole approach so that it doesn't look like they're the targets. Um, but in terms of action, I would like to see um, the easiest thing that could be done is just like, like they do awareness campaigns for all kinds of things. Title IX would make an easy awareness campaign. Because one thing about these schools is you walk around, no, none of the students have any idea what Title IX is. There's no information about it. There's no like you see anti-bullying posters on the wall, but you're never going to see a poster about what to do if something like if you're ever sexually harassed or abused, you'll never see a poster like that. Um, so awareness would be the easiest one for them to do something about in regards to Title IX. But I'm also asking for some sort of investigation into how t Title IX claims are being processed in the county, how like reports are being handled because clearly there's a disconnect from a student who goes to report some sort of sexual abuse and the uh, consequences that are being handed out if any at all you know um and so those are i think the two like no-brainers that the district could do to start um so yeah well, I just, again, just want to say thank you. Um, and I do agree with you. There needs to be oversight in the processes and how things are done. Because even just in my advocacy work, not even talking about sexual assault, 
but actual just abuse. Um, children being hit by teachers, even those type of processes and the way that those are handled are very questionable. And so I think that there needs to be oversight with the district on how they handle all types of cases and reports and incidents to make sure that kids are safe and that they are in a safe environment. Um, so what is something that you want to tell the people, um, your final thoughts or comment? Um, the people being like the public, you mean, or the, yeah. okay. Um, gosh, there's, there's so many things, you know, that I want to say. So it's always hard to pick the one that best fits the moment. Um, so I think, um, I think I'm going to save what I really want to say for the school board tomorrow. Um, so I would encourage everybody. Um, I know nobody watches the live streams of the school board meetings, um, but I would encourage them to watch it because I think seeing every student come with their story back to back and seeing how, you know, 20 people is 20 stories. I think that'll be a lot more impactful than anything I could say right now. Well, just thank you again for the opportunity to get to interview you and to share your story and your advocacy. And if there's anything that our organization can do to uplift the voices of the students, um, you have the network and you have the platform to do that. So again, I thank you. Of course, thank you so much for having me. Um, yeah, I there was, you know, before that whole Bethany Barnes story ever even came out, um, there was I my initial report that to the county, um, the first time I ever made a report was in 2019, which I suppose now is three years ago because we're in 2022. So there was just two years where it was just silence. Nobody's voices was being heard. Um, so thank you for helping everybody.